Hello, good afternoon, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, US markets for the trading of uh, 2nd of March 2016. Be sure to visit www.cfds.com for your trading needs, especially in spread betting CFD brokerage. Alternatively, you can visit the uh, educational site, www.cfds.education, to certainly learn more. Okay, now let's uh, try and uh, decipher exactly as to what's uh, happening with regards to this market at present, especially US markets given the uh, stellar rally in Asia overnight. Uh, we have the Nikkei, the Shanghai up 4% each. You have the US markets called it closing quite uh, bullish yesterday as well. Or on this morning in terms of European markets, we have the FTSE lagging. Uh, the European indices, the DAX and CAC certainly higher, just about more or less flatlining uh, and certainly uh, indicating a potential move higher. So let's see exactly what's happening with regards to the markets because we know that the rally overnight, we had a pivot high on the S&P 500 overnight of, uh, I think the pivot high was around 1986, 1990-1990. So it should be interesting to see how the US markets react. Now in terms of economic data so far, we've had mortgage applications uh, come out weaker than expected. Uh, PPI, or producer price index in Europe, certainly come out, came out weaker on a month-on-month -month basis, minus 1%. So obviously that indicates that we need more QE, which should send the euro USD lower, and that should help the European indices certainly uh, inflate higher. We've had uh, Swiss GDP uh, stronger than expected, along with the Aussie GDP stronger than expected. And in the fact, obviously, you have um, a, uh, the uh, Asian markets quite seller and uh, quite bullish then you can certainly see the um, the US markets following on from there. Okay, now in terms of the S&P 500, I think that will be the key uh, gauge in, in order to understand which way this market is going to go. The 60-minute chart has higher highs and higher lows. We have this rising contracting wedge type pattern, something to certainly keep an eye out for. We're currently trading at 1974. We had a 1978 pivot high uh, on the 10-minute chart. We can see that. We certainly closed strong with good volume as well. On the daily chart, we certainly had a bullish engulfing candle. So even though we can cons consolidate above the 1965 level, we should still remain bullish. And the target remains the gap fill at 1990. Now, given the fact that we've had the um, Asian markets higher by almost 4%, we've had Aussie and Swiss GDP as well. There's no real catalyst stopping uh, the uh, the rally in the S&P 500 closing that gap at 1990 potentially testing that previous support equals resistance at 1993. Um, other than the fact that we have oil, oil really is probably the only wild card. And uh, given the fact that the oil price has been stuck at $34.5, there's no real catalyst in stopping this rally in the equity market. Okay. Um, now, even though we've had dismal data from China and uh, mixed data from Europe, etc., it still hasn't stopped the price of oil from moving higher. So, or even stable, well, even preventing it from falling lower. So, I can't see how that will obviously uh, hinder the um, the ability this today, and we should still see uh, potential sideways uh, sideways trading action. If we do fall lower, then the next level is around thirty two point five. We're currently trading at thirty three point seven. Okay, now in terms of uh, the S and P five hundred, let's just cross reference that with the Russell. If I just bring up a chart of the Russell two thousand. I mean, even the Wiltshire five thousand. If I just bring this chart up as well. The Wilshire 5000 is very bullish too. I mean, look at that breakout. The next level is 20,600 on this. So certainly very bullish and um, certainly indicating a potential move higher. Now, allow me to just bring up Russell. Okay, well, we've got the, uh, the Russell 3000, which is always a good gauge. Okay, Russell 3000, certainly a good gauge. Now, uh, the initial target on this will be potential gap fills here, 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 okay? So these are the zones to watch. So you have two gap fills. So certainly another uh, thrust is um, is due. Okay, so we're expecting US markets certainly push higher here from this juncture and uh, looking at uh, gap fill levels above. Okay, so watch out for those gaps. Once we hit those potential gaps, then we are looking at potential resistance. You do have a diagonal trend line as well. That certainly needs to be observed uh, on this uh, on this uh, market at present. So any pullback, you have this diagonal trend line that will certainly come into play as well. So overall bullish uh, until we reach the gap fill and gap fill and gap fill. Okay, so three gaps that need to be filled above. Okay, now let me just bring up the Russell 2000. Here we go. So if I just go to the daily chart, as always, as of always, first. Now we currently already are into that diagonal trend line, so that is a slight cause for concern. Although having said that, there's no real nothing really stopping this market until we reach 107. 
and gap fill 108 so really it's on the onus will be on the uh, the actual uh, uh, US markets now to certainly propel and continue to uh, move higher and like I said the 1990 gap fill resistance will be the area or the zone to potentially target okay right uh, in terms of the Nasdaq itself let's bring up the German uh, the friend Nasdaq the daily chart the Nasdaq you can see that we did push higher bullish engulfing candle the next real resistance is seen at 43.60 then you have gap fill above at 44.40 so those are the zones that the, the Nasdaq is potentially targeting. Okay, bringing up a 60-minute chart, we certainly are in a, um, a, a no uh, no man's land. Basically, you can see that we've broken through this resistance, broken through this resistance here. The next real resistance in the Nasdaq now is at 43.60. I can't see any other resistance other than that at this juncture. So 43.60 is a zone that we are going to be watching very closely. Okay, on the Nasdaq itself. Right, the uh, S, the uh, Russell S is cross reference that with the biotechs as well. Okay, as always, so you have the biotechs certainly not pushing higher, certainly looking very bullish. 10 minute chart, no, nothing really stopping this from moving higher. The daily chart on the biotechs as well, you can see that we clearly have this inverted head and shoulders formation, so nothing stopping the biotechs from moving higher at all. <clears throat> <coughs> if anything the Nasdaq wants to move even higher so that's basically where we stand okay now in terms of uh, the uh, semiconductors let's just uh, wait up the semiconductors uh, daily chart certainly remains bullish we seem to be targeting that 200 ma potential gap fill above as well so certainly an impressive move a very very impressive move in the well uh, the uh, semiconductors as well uh, you do have previous uh, support equals resistance in this zone here so that's all about that 200 ma once we reach that 200 ma and we're looking to potentially could close the gap above then you can certainly see the market pausing here okay right so that certainly remains bullish now let's just bring up the dow jones as well and the dow transports the dow transports certainly um, has uh, been impressive we have taken out that resistance that previous support equals resistance the next resistance zone from my perspective on the Dow transports now will be this zone here, which is at 7650. If we continue to move higher, then you have the 200 MA to deal with there. Now, the Dow Jones itself, Dow Jones Industrial, bring up the daily chart. You can see that we've certainly pushed higher. We are coming into this zone here, this resistance zone here. So watch out for that resistance zone at above around, just approaching 17,000, but certainly a very, very impressive thrust higher, nevertheless, okay? Uh, so we are looking to uh, potentially move higher and uh, it's all about oil now oil can spoil the party so keep an eye on, on that oil price as well okay uh, also with regards to yen you do have an unfilled gap below so whether or not we can certainly start to move lower here and allow the markets to push higher so again all uh, potential food for thought okay my bias would be for 1992 uh, potentially close and then i would certainly turn bearish now if the oil price can sustain itself here keep afloat then the markets will rally if it fails to do so then expect risk of aversion in this market but it's very uh, unlikely given asian markets are both up by almost four percent shanghai and the uh, and the nikkei okay i think that's a market wrap i uh, wish you the best for your trading uh, today and be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs goodbye